Hey guys, it's George. Welcome to the second episode of Rookie Radar. Rookie Radar is my new series where I explore the latest K-pop rookies. Very self-explanatory title. <laughs> the fifth generation are completely new to me and after reviewing the red carpet looks at the end of year show season, I decided I need to get to grips with this new generation. In each video, I'm going to introduce you to the group, followed with a bit of information about their backstory before we dive into their debut and the comebacks they've released since. This series isn't gonna have a huge focus on fashion, but of course, if there's a standout concept, a standout look, we will talk about it. I want this series to be about the music and sharing my initial reactions and just exploring a new generation of K-pop idols with you guys. Our second episode of Rookie Radar is all about Zykers. This is KQ Entertainment's second group, a second boy group after 80s, and it's Zyka's first anniversary on the 30th. So, you know, I thought this would be the perfect time to focus in on Zyka's. So, who is Zyka's? Zyka's are a 10 member boy group under KQ Entertainment, and before they debuted, they were known as KQ Fellas 2. Two. Two. <laughs> They released the pre-debut song Geek on the 17th of September 2022, a song composed and produced by member Min Jae. And prior to this, the group premiered their pre-debut web series, Ready to One, which follows the group as they train in LA, California. And you know, 80s must have made KQ Entertainment some cash money to train a 10-member boy group in LA. In the lead up to their debut on the 30th of March, there was a lot of promotion. We had the web series Tricky House, which was released on February 27th, 2023. And we also had the TV series, TV what? TV series Let's Go Zykers on March 14th, 2023. Zykers officially debuted on March 30th with the mini album Tricky House Doorbell Ringing, and they had two title tracks. They had Tricky House, which was released on the 30th of March. And then Rockstar, which was released on the 24th of April. One, two, three, four, five, six, In its first week, Tricky House Doorbell Ringing sold over 100,000 copies. And this is the fifth highest first week sales figure for a debut album in South Korea on Hanseo chart in 2023. So... We're already setting records. On August 2nd, Zykas released their second mini album, House of Tricky, How to Play. And we also got two title tracks of this mini album. We got Do or Die, which was released on the 2nd of August. And then Homeboy, which was released on the 23rd of August. And in a few days, as I'm filming this, I'm filming this on March 5th, on March 8th, Zykas will be coming back with House of Tricky, Trial and Error, their third mini album. So I'll be filming the first portion of this video and then at the end, I'll be coming back and including that third mini album title track. So where does the name Zykas come from? Zykas derived their name from a combination of the letter X symbolizing coordinates and the word hiker meaning traveler. Altogether, the group names refer to boys who travel through time and space in search of coordinates. And this leads on to Zyka's fandom. Their fandom are called Road. It means to become the coordinates that present the road, Zyka's will walk down in the future and join their adventures and journey. So I think that's a really nice, like, you know, meshing of storylines when it comes to their name and the names of their fans. I couldn't find their fandom color during my research. So if you guys know that, please drop it in the comments. And just to finish off our Who Are Zykas section, they won an award this end of year show season. It was the K Global Heart Dreams Award for K Global Super Rookie Award. So we're breaking records, we're winning awards. A successful first year for Zykas. Now, who are the members that make up Zykas? The leader of Zykas is Min Jae. He is the leader, main rapper, main dancer, vocalist, and composer. So he's got a big role in this group. He is 20 years old. And fun fact, he is close friends with Inhypen's Jungwon. 
We next have Jan Min. He is the main dancer and lead vocalist, and he's also 20 years old. Fun fact, he considers himself the mother of the group as he performs a plethora of tasks for the members. Moving on to our main rapper, we have Sun Min, who is 19 years old. And fun fact for Sun Min, he is known as Zyka's official destroyer as he's always breaking things. Clumsy boy. <laughs> Next up, our main vocalist, Jin Sik. He is our main vocalist and also visual. He's 19 years old and he grew up listening to a lot of EXO. Great choice. I would like to know what his favorite EXO song is. Continuing with our main vocalist, we have Hyunwoo, who is also 19 years old. And fun fact, he has the shortest training period by far compared to the other members being only a trainee for two months before debuting. That is insane. Jung Eun, our lead vocalist, he is 18 years old and he can play the guitar, piano and danzo. Musically talented. I could not play anything. Next up we have Sian. He is a vocalist and visual. He is 18 years old and his fun fact, he is an ex pledis trainee. Yu Jan is also a vocalist, a visual and also 18 years old. And apparently he is the hardest member to deal with because he's always hyper. <laughs> I'll give you a bottle of water and be like, go stand at the corner. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Next up, our main dancer, we have Hunter, our main dancer and vocalist who is also 18 years old. Hunter said a dancer from LA, Matt Stefania inspired him to start dancing and his role models are NCT's Ten and Atiza's Sam. We love Ten. We love Sam. And finally, Ye Chan, who is our main rapper, main dancer, vocalist and matinee, also at 18 years old. He was a contestant on Under 19, which I believe was a survival show to form the group One the Nine. He was eliminated in the last episode. His final rank was 15th and he was unable to debut with the group. I'm really curious about Zykers because this is KQ Entertainment's second ever group after 80s. And I think it's really interesting that they decided to debut another boy group after a boy group. I feel like agencies tend to kind of like jump back and forth between like male, female, male, female. So I'm interested to see what the styling is like, what their sound is like, because 80s definitely have a signature sound, a signature style. I went to see 80s when I was in Seoul last spring with my friend Lily, who had never been to a K-pop concert. She'd never listened to K-pop and she was, let's just say it wasn't her vibe. Um, but that always puts a big smile on my face. Sorry, Lily. <laughs> so yeah, I'm interested to see if there's a complete difference, if there are any similarities, and I'll admit I've slept on Zykers, I've not listened to their music, I've not watched their MVs, I've not paid any attention to this group, and that's why we're sat here making the series. Bounce, move like this. Now I got a plan like this. House of Tricky, Doorbell Ringing. We've got the title track, Tricky House and Rockstar, and Sumpi said the group's debut title track, Tricky House, depicts the happenings that arise as the members enter a house where time and space exist freely. The dramatic song showcases a modern interpretation of Bollywood and Moonbaton genres and has mysteriously fun charm. So with that in mind, let's jump in to the Tricky House MV. As it currently stands, this has 32 million views. <laughs> oh. The low cap, like, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> this man must be terrified. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
There's so much colour. It's like <laughs> <laughs> Man's exploding. Talk about drama. <laughs> I know I love that the legs and then like the neon outline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really enjoying it so far. The fashion is great, it's colourful, the song can definitely see like the Bollywood vibe to it, but just this poor man is going through it. <laughs> Oh my god, yes, work. I feel like in comparison to 80s, the concept is a lot more like youthful and bright. I feel like you get a lot of like this token kind of concept with 80s and it can be quite dark. Whereas this is fun, this is bright. There's a whimsical, not taking ourselves too seriously vibe to it. The ATM. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this man has had a long night. Do you know what I mean? Vintage Ferrari. Oh, please tell me he's not gonna smash it. I wanna have a go. I wanna have a go right now. <laughs> oh my god, the chaos. Mr. I see you. <laughs> Oh my god, he looks like he's having the best fucking time. <laughs> I honestly don't think a K-pop movie has made me laugh this much. No, don't end, I've had the best time. <laughs> I enjoyed that so fucking much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm counting the brooms because they probably represent the amount of members, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Hope you had a lovely night with your brooms. That was so good. Let's keep this moving and move on to Rockstar and then I'll come back and give you my thoughts on House of Tricky doorbell ringing. Completely different vibe already. No I'm vibing. Neck tattoo. Rebellious schoolboy vibes. I'm loving the complete shift change and like the rocky vibe is like nostalgic for me always. And the graphics, the graphics are sick. <laughs> Aggressive! Yes! The blue flames tying us back in to Tricky House. 
I like how the clothing, we got quite the dark screen for the Heather Rebellious element. The Rebellious elements, but we're getting that through here with that set of looks, still dark in colour. Now with the Varsity vibe, bring us back to school. I really like the graphics. It does remind me of Stray Kids Thunderous, but it also does really tie into their fashion beat. Teach you that you're peculiar, been there. It's so really, really different. We are. Wait, what did he have on his neck? Is it a date? Interesting. I wonder if that represents like, you know, like you go to school, everyone's in uniform, like, you know, you're a number. Interesting. Yes, Rebel, I want to see an outfit switch. see between 80s and Zykers is a production value with their MVs. There's always a very clear storyline. There's always a big production. There's always a lot going on. The styling is always really good and has a clear aesthetic. And I can see that in both groups. When it comes to the sound, I don't really see that many similarities. I don't know all the 80s songs in the world, I can only compare to the songs that I know, but I just appreciate the fact that we're getting two completely different vibes, two completely different sounds, and it's a boy group from the same agency, and they've released boy group back to back. You don't really see that. With Tricky House, I prefer the music video, just because, as I said, I honestly don't think a K-pop music video has made me laugh so fucking much. But Rockstar, I just love the aesthetic. It takes me back to like, for me it's nostalgic, reminds me of being like that grungy, rebellious teenager vibe. And I just like the message of the song and how the power builds. Let's move on to House of Tricky, How to Play. And we have the title tracks, Do or Die and Homeboy. So. Simpy says, once again, Do or Die is an alternative rock genre song that refreshingly captures the unique energy of Zykers as they speed on ahead forward without hesitation. They also describe the music video as lively and chaotic. So I'm excited to see that. And if we're continuing with this like rocky vibe to the music, I'm gonna love, I'm gonna live. So let's jump in to Do or Die. So Do or Die was released on the 2nd of August, 2023, and it currently stands at just under 20 million views. The Vintage TV. Yes. No, I love this vibe. True, like, no grunge. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> giving me Harley Quinn vibes. Zombies though. I've been having weird zombie dreams, like, I don't need this. <laughs> Chanel. I'm really liking the juxtaposition because the zombies aside, it's quite like a bright setting, a bright styling. Again, it's whimsical and fun. But then we're getting these like rock vibes. <laughs> the zombie on the stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> the guitar on the heart monitor. <laughs> Are we gonna have zombie bad mates? Ooh, no, 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 no. I mean, I said I wasn't gonna talk about fashion that much, but here I am. The piece of fabric between the two legs, it just makes me think of Vivian Westwood bondage trousers, a very iconic piece from Westwood. Probably not Westwood, so I don't think they do a short version, but what about them buy from? Crown. <laughs> it's like, is it just a good time? Like, that's what, that's what I'm finding out. Like the words cool fun vibes they don't take themselves too seriously it's just continuing I'm gonna have nightmares again zombie film Like a thriller style choreo, come on! <laughs> They're so much fun, I just love it. <laughs> I know, I love how this is like slow down. Ooh! Fine, broken, back, broken. <laughs> no, so it's always a pain music. <laughs> this is just so good. <laughs> Nah, that is so fun, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like what did Soupy say again? Like, let's just... Alternative rock genre song that refreshingly captures the unique energy of Zykers. I hit the nail on the head. I... They just make me laugh. Like, I just love the visuals. Like, it's not serious at all. Like, a heart monitor with a guitar or smashing a zombie on the head now we're putting them on a stretch to try and save them. Like, it's just so much fun. There's a level of humour and stupidity to it. And I'm saying, like, the humour's stupid, not that the visuals are stupid, just, you know, in case anyone's like, in the comments. Okay, let's keep it moving with Homeboy. Just before we press play, I searched some info on the Homeboy concept, and I got this from Reddit, so take this <laughs> as you please. The music video for Homeboy by Zykers explores the theme of home by depicting various settings that Zykers' house can transform into. 
The white and grey backdrops initially represent social constraints, but as zykas break free, they symbolise freedom to roam wherever they please. And to me, this sounds like it ties in to the concept behind the group's name. So that being said, let's jump into it. Homeboy released on the 23rd of August, 2003, 2003, 2023, and it currently has 24 and a half million views. The blue light. It's giving away the idea of confusion, but it's also tying back in Tricky House and Rockstar. Ooh! I mean, I doubt any of them are the duckling. I'm liking this vibe so far, like a slower, more serious vibe. <laughs> the way I'll be pulling it like this. We're still getting the fun brightness of the clothing, the sets. That's when we serious though. Definitely like a bright spring concept, perfect for August. Oh, not spring. Like <laughs> I don't know if that was meant to be funny, but I found it funny. I was about to be like, oh, in serious studio setting, let me pan out. <laughs> I do really like it when they film from this upper angle, it's just the way it's like such a sick composition. I like the shorts again. I really like how they pulled that blue element through, but it gives you kind of like a fairy tale, like Tinkerbell, like that's what it makes me think of anyway, do you know? This literally looks like a school picture, you know, that background. This is so cute! Ooh! Love that transition, that was so good. Again, very similar to like the pan shot out earlier, but this is more serious. Are they gonna run in the sea like every beach <laughs> sea in <laughs> K-pop? <laughs> of course, of course. I really like this move when I think about her voice, it's like playing, you know? Oh, I love a pink sky. Very similar to House of Tricky, doorbell ringing. The music video for Do or Die, fave, but I feel like Homeboy is my fave 
in terms of the song. I feel like the releases from both mini albums follow the same kind of formula where the song that comes out first with the visuals as well is very whimsical and fun. It's very big in terms of production value. Whereas the second release, Rockstar, Homeboy, it leans more serious with the message of the song and then also slightly with the visuals. Like this was probably the most serious MV we've seen from Zykas so far. We'll see what happens in a few days when their third mini album is released. I like the fact that we're getting to see a more serious side, but then we also have the extreme where they just make you laugh. Like I said, a K-pop group has not made me laugh as much with their MVs and I've really enjoyed that. Like, we're a young group that's youthful, whimsy, fun. Anyway, let's jump to future me, probably wearing something less chic. I mean, we'll see, I don't know what I'm gonna wear. For Tricky House, Trial and Error. Hey guys, we are back for House of Tricky, Trial and Error and the title track, We Don't Stop. This is the second time I'm filming this. I filmed this last week, reviewed the footage and it's out of focus the entire time. This camera is getting on my last damn nerve, but take two, hopefully take two's a charm, as they say. Well, no, they say third time's a charm. Wow. With this third mini album, we do need to note that member Jung Eun has been on hiatus since last May due to a torn cruciate ligament, so he's not been able to participate in the album's recording or any of the promotions. Doing research into House of Tricky Trial and Error, I've not really been able to find too much on the concept of this album, but I have seen that the members described it as a bold comeback and an article on All K-Pop described the MV teaser as displaying Zyka's powerful side. When I was researching this, I did see a hilarious comment on Reddit, fucking Reddit. It said, Zyka's concept is messing around and causing problems and it's truly admirable the way that they've managed to absorb that into their music. And that just made me scream because as you guys have seen so far in this video, a group has just never made me laugh this much. Also, we have a record to pull out with this mini album. According to Hanteo Chart, House of Tricky Trial and Error sold an impressive 224,437 copies within the first week of release. This beat Zyka's previous record with their second mini album, House of Tricky, How to Play, which sold a total of 205,895 copies. So a huge congratulations to Zyka's. I've chewed your ear off enough. Let's dive into We Don't Stop. Causing havoc already, fuck. I love the sad black and white graphic, you know. <laughs> oh my god, the full denim outfit on the pile of jeans, yes. <laughs> I like the fact we're getting like the rock vibe continuing, but it's obviously got this hip hop edge through the music and the styling. <laughs> Love this set, and then how we're getting the pops of red. Do it or die. Reference to previous music. I love the fact that with the aesthetics, we're getting this set where it's black and white, the colors come through the outfits. And then in the next scene, we're getting this bold color here. So it gives your eye like these differences and contrasts to jump to. Ooh, I like how there's a breakdown in the visuals as well as the song. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that transition was so good. <laughs> Ooh, teleport, and then we're getting that through the visual. That's a nice composition. I like this choreo and how he's like in control of all the numbers. I must admit, the styling is uh, lackluster, we'll talk, we'll talk. But powerful, yes. All K pop were right. Oh my god, that was cute. <laughs> The all denim outfit with the pile of jeans is the best, best set. <laughs> Ooh, don't fuck with Zykers. Ooh, no, no, how we've like switched the vibe of the song and then gone to black and white. I really like the vibe of the song. The styling just kills it for me. The move on of the song, the rock vibes that have continued from House of Tricky, How to Play, and those two title tracks into We Don't Stop, and how we're getting this more powerful hip hop vibe mixed in with the sound. I think the sound is incredible. They're continuing on with their fun, funny, like fucking around vibe, which I just love for them. I know I said we weren't gonna focus on fashion, but I did say we weren't gonna talk about fashion unless there is a standout concept. And that also includes when something is lackluster. I think the styling is lackluster because clearly there is hip hop inspiration to the music. So why have we not gone down an inspired route with the fashion? It literally looks like they've just pulled looks out of hip hop videos from like the 90s, early 2000s. The fact that we have the members in like the iced out chains of like the dollar bills, like it's just, why have we not made this contemporary? Why have we not taken inspiration? Where is the stylist's take on it? Come on now. It's lazy. For me, this is predominantly the set of looks where the members are all in the varsity jackets. The varsity jackets are pretty much the same across the board. The styling of the varsity jackets is the same across the board. So I just think that's really disappointing. If I was going to style this music video, I would have done a set of looks inspired by baggy jeans, different cuts and fits of baggy jeans, different washes. And then instead of going for the Timberland boots, I would have gone for suede in that texture to add accents to the outfits. I was also scrolling through Instagram the other day and there's this account where I just crush on this guy so hard, like the style, just the guy, like he is really hot. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm embarrassing myself. Um, the account handle is Trendy Wooby, and he put up this look where he'd layered these different baggy jeans and I was just like, that would have been perfect for this. That's the kind of vibe I wanna see. It's like contemporary inspired take on hip hop, not just literal. I also think instead of doing the bandanas worn around the head, it would have been fun to play on that print of a bandana and blow it up on these massive scales and then use it 
in different levels throughout the members. Some members with accents of that print, some members with full pieces in that print to give it different levels. And you know, instead of the iced out chains with the dollar bills, which is just stereotypical, I would have used different iced out chains and given different levels to the members. So say if I was styling an oversized denim jacket, I would have done it up, worn it loose from here up and then just stacked chains down the chest. We could have done a denim vest and had bracelets and rings stacked up the arms so we're not going in this stereotypical direction, we're going in an inspired direction. So that's just my take on the styling. Let me know what you think on the styling. I know I wasn't supposed to dive in fashion, but here we are. Twist my arm. Like, I just can't help myself. For me, out of all of the mini albums that we've gone through, I think House of Tricky, How to Play has to be my favourite. Do or Die and Homeboy just my favourite songs. I think their debut MV, Tricky House, is my favourite MV because that just made me scream with laughter. I love the chaos of this group and how they're just not taking the visuals so seriously. Like, trust me, I love a serious, moody, dark visual, but this is the first time I've seen something on like the true other end of the spectrum where it's fun, whimsical, we're really leaning into that direction. Another thing I'm really enjoying about Zykers is how their sound is evolving, but there's still a correlation back to previous sounds. You think, we don't stop, we're getting this hip hop inspiration, but it's still got an essence of do or die homeboy, those rock edge, that's really bad English, the rocky edge to the music. I just want to say thank you to everyone who gave me amazing feedback on the first episode. It really made my day and I really can't wait to share more of this series with you. If you want more Rookie Raider content, you just need to click right here for Zero Base One's episode if you've not already seen it. But thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed. You are amazing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.